This could literally wreck my telescope. This is my motorised telescope mount. You align it against known objects in the night sky, after which it automatically compensates for the rotation of the Earth at your longitude and latitude and given the time of year. The intelligence is actually built into the hand controller, which connects to the telescope in one of these two RJ12 ports. The second RJ12 port, labelled AUX, allows you to connect various other accessories. For $160, you can buy a GPS unit, which programs the telescope with the current time and location, saving you having to manually enter it each time. This is a homemade version I made back in 2017 for about $20. There's a U-Blox GPS unit, an Arduino Nano, a voltage divider, and there's this sketchy power circuitry over here, which I got out of a car cigarette lighter adapter for converting 12 volts down to 5 volts. This may be a cause of a problem. Oh, and there's an LED over this side. And this draws power from and communicates with the telescope via this RJ12 connector. This project was completed and shared by Andre Paquette, Thomas Payus, and Andrew Evdo Kimovai, who generously shared both the code and designs that I could adapt to make this work. And when it does work, it's really excellent. But when it doesn't, it silently fails. The serial connection between the mount and the Arduino is non-standard and it is bridged, which means a custom version of the software serial library is required to interpret it. Because the GPS unit connects to the hardware serial ports, it's not possible to use serial debugging. I attempted to upgrade the microcontroller to these more modern ESP32s, which would allow me a web interface to view into the software. However, I wasn't able to figure out how to update the custom software serial library that was being used back on the AVR processors, which limited me to these old 5 volt Arduino Nanos this was originally designed for. That meant limited memory. I can connect one of these OLED screens, but once the drivers are included and the screen memory is allocated, I'm only left with a few bytes to actually store any data in. The first step in this rebuild is the connection to the telescope, splitting out the cores of the flat flex wire Hot glue may be ugly, but it provides excellent weatherproofing and strain relief. Well, if I'm honest, this is the bit I've been putting off. If I got it right, then put 12 volts into the telescope, we plug this into the auxiliary port, and we should get 12 volts ground on the green wire, 12 volts on the white wire. If I done it wrong, something bad could happen. Okay, so first of all, telescope on. 12 volts, power on, verifying packages, please wait. Okay, let's try and get this plugged in. Okay, a little short, that's a good start. And I've got 10.2 volts across there. That's interesting. I wonder if it means that's not really ground. So brown is up at 5 volts. That would suggest 5 volt logic, but a slight underpower on the 12 volt line. I put a screen on it so I can do some basic debugging and I have the GPS attached. This isn't yet connected up to the phone, the phone connection mount. That's going to come in the next step. I did do some nice 206 surface mount soldering under there, but other than that it's been a bit of a pain. So I've been mostly waiting for these little micro switches to arrive because now they've arrived I've been able to move off the proto board the GPS receiver uses the serial transmit and receive pins of the Arduino which are also what you need to program it. So in order to have this wired up and still be able to program it I need to switch these pins between programming mode and GPS feed mode, which I do by simply powering off or cutting the power to the GPS unit. So what I'm going to try and do now is test that theory and program this up with my test program. Okay, sending it to the board. It's transmitting, it's transmitting. Okay, done uploading. 
There's something on the screen that's promising, but let's switch this to a power pack and give it a test. Okay, here we go. Let's use the power pack to power up the Nano. Can't do with that cable. Okay, we have some life down here. Ah, I need to reconnect, power up the GPS unit. Oh, already receiving serial data. That's good. We'll give it a minute and see if it gets a lock. This is looking pretty promising. Where are you satellites? I'll fast forward this bit in post. Oh, we have a little red light, so we have a fix over here. There we go. Change over here. Four satellites so far. Okay, so that's working pretty well. The next step is to plug this into the telescope and to see what happens then. Ideally, these bottom one, two, three, four fields, this really is about 16 fields, but four lines of fields, we'll get some data. Well, this could do anything up to and including explode. I'm not on mains power here, I'm going to use a battery, which is what I normally do. Battery runs to the telescope. If we power this on, we should be able to turn the telescope on. And it should say verifying packages and then come on. Next RSMT. Okay. The next step is to plug this into here, and this will draw 12 volts, which will hopefully be sufficient to not blow up but to power the nano. Should we find out? This could literally wreck my telescope. Oh, but it hasn't. It's powered the Nano, and the screen, and the GPS. It's thinking about getting alignment. Maybe let's turn it on, off and on again. Oh, I am getting received messages on my screen here. And a bit has flipped. It wants the time. That is annoying. Okay, so we're we're close to having something that works. I wonder where it's going wrong. Hmm. Well, now at least we can start debugging. Well, after some intriguing debugging, I discovered I needed to change a timeout value from 5 seconds up to 10 seconds. The software was assuming that my GPS unit could provide updates more frequently than it could. When we power on the telescope, we have a screen of static, followed by a direct serial feed from the GPS unit until an entire frame has been grabbed. Now we see some debugging information. Row 1 is the number of satellites currently acquired. Row 2 is the number of bytes received from the GPS serial. Number 3 is the current fix age in milliseconds, and number 4 is the current time. Rows 5, 6 and 7 show data about the communication with the mount. So far, 69 messages have been exchanged between the handset and the mount. Now we need to start an alignment. So now the mount directs messages to the GPS unit which we receive and then send back answers. We can see 10 messages now sent to the mount. Because of the super tight memory constraints, I've packed quite a lot of information into the final two bytes that are displayed. Each bit represents a message of a particular type being answered. The mount has not asked for all the data, which I believe it could have. It's got time, date, year, longitude and latitude, which is what you have to enter manually but it doesn't check the number of satellites or the status, which is a bit strange. Strange or not, it's sufficient to start the alignment process without having to manually enter those numbers. Thank you for watching.